Welcome to part two of this ZX81 refurb. Uh, we've already replaced the TV modular unit just here in part one. And today what we're going to do is replace the um, memory chip here. Uh, we've got a new one in a bag ready to go. And the reason for that is this is, this is actually a 2K chip. Uh, but uh, the link cable here is good, it's set for 1K, so this only gives 1K uh, of memory to the ZX81. So what we need to do is we need to desolder this chip, we'll mount this new chip on the board, but because this chip is, is slightly different, it's going to give it 16K in total, which used to be those RAM packs that used to plug in the back, uh, we need to change some of the pinouts on here, uh, which will go to the diodes down here. Um, so I think the first job we need to do is to desolder this chip. And we're going to be really careful about it because what we don't want to do is to lift any of these pads that are on the board. So I'm going to set the temperature of the soldering iron a bit cooler uh, and just take my time and just desolder these, these pins. I'll use this Chinese desoldering pump which you may have seen a couple of times it's got a silicon end on it um, and because it's got silicon end it's a bit more flexible and I find this slightly better when I'm doing circuit boards like this because the rubberized end or silicon end can get quite a good seal around the actual solder um, that we want to desolder and the spring is quite uh, tough as well. So um, let's get the soldering iron uh, warmed up and let's get these uh, legs desoldered. Right, I've got the board set up now on the vise um, and um, I'm going to just cover it with a bit of flux. So you'll see actually there's there's other connections which are, are here and also here. Now what these were for were for the uh, other chips because some of them you get double chips, two, two chips on it and there they tend to be the early ones and the later ones like this has the single chip. I believe, although I might be wrong, in America, the Timex version of this had the link cable on the other side, so they got a whopping 2K, whereas us in the UK only got 1K. Right, okay, so um, I'm going to use my pump, like I said, and uh, let's get desoldering. I'm not going to bore you with doing this in real time, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but just to show you, so... Put the soldering iron on and suck the solder away like that. That's all I'm going to do. Um, I'm not going to keep the soldering iron on too long because the last thing I want to do is to lift any traces. But as you can see on that first one that I've done, it's cleaned it up quite well. So let's do the rest of them.
Well, it's a couple of days later and I'm not doing particularly well. Um, let me explain what's happened. Uh, first of all, my uh, stand that I use to hold the camera broke. Uh, so I'm using a different stand at the moment. And secondly, when I took, I finally took the um, chip off the board, the round chip off the board, um, I caught a trace. So that video you've just seen is me replacing the trace on the circuit board, which is just there, just down there. Let me just see if I can do a quick zoom in, see if you can see it. There we go. So it's just down there, that trace there. Luckily, there's only one, and luckily, it's only from there to there. But I replaced it with that um, small wire, and I put a drop of glue on it as well, just to hold it in place. So what we need to do now is put the IC holder on. Before I do that, let's just make sure that the legs are straight. Put it in here and clamp it together, make sure it's nice and straight. Now we've got a cutout on the top here that we've got to line up. So let's see if we can get that in now. So it's going to go in. I'm just going to double check that that wire is not. I'll just put a spot of glue on it to hopefully hold it in place. So it doesn't. Yeah, that's okay. Don't want it to short against anything. Uh, we're just going to put that in. I've got a leg that's a bit wonky. You can see that it's just at an angle. Let's see if we can straighten that out. There we go. Right. Let's try that again, shall we? Still not quite right. There we go, let's go back in place. Now I've still not soldered the wire on this side yet because I wanted to do that once I got the IC holder in place. So that's now in place. But what I would like to do before I go any further is just do a quick continuity test on each side of this pin just to make sure that it's not been shorted against anything. So let me just grab my multimeter. Right, got the multimeter. And just test. Okay, so that's all right. So we're just going to do a quick continuity test just to make sure that we're not crossed over anywhere. Nope, that looks like it's okay. And just check the actual joint on here. Yeah, that's okay. And either side of it is fine. So, yep, yeah, that's okay. Right, so we can get that soldered into place. Right, just like we did before, let's put a bit of blue tack on here. Other colour tack is available. And spin that over. This is the wire, this is the connection wire, just loose here. Not done anything with that yet. And let's get these soldered in. And we'll do just the same as we've done before. So we just heat up the leg. Pop a bit of solder on. There it goes. And at this end, 
to do the same thing. Okay, and we'll just leave that like that. And we'll check the um, socket, make sure that it's in place and it's not moved anywhere. Which it hasn't, that's okay. So we can now solder this in place. Right, we've got the um, socket on now. Um, you know, as you've seen, I've cut the bit of cable off that was left there, so that should be repaired now. You can't really see it now, the socket's in place. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to put the link cable in. Now, when we got this circuit board, um, the link cable was between the centre pin here and why is that strobing again? Let's turn that light up back. There we go, that's better. So the link cable is between here and there, which is called LK1. But now we've got we're going to put some more memory in. We need to link it to LK2, so it needs to go across there. So for that, we need um, a bit of metal. Now I'm looking on my bench here, oh, there it is, and I've got this little box, all these little connections from when I've chopped off legs from different components. So what you can do is we can solder this into place on there, so I'm going to put this through the hole and then bend it over and then we can solder that in place just there. Um, right, I need to hold that down. Right, so now I need to cut a bit of that off because we don't want it to short out. So let's pop a bit of solder on it. There we go. Right, so if I hold that down with that screwdriver, I apologise, I'm bringing the light back over so you can see what's going on. I'll try that, is that better? There we go. That's that in place. Sorry, I, I'm trying a new um, camera holder, but every time you knock it, it it, um, it wobbles about a bit. So I'm going to have to get a different one, I think. Right. Let's get that chopped off, and then the other. Sorry, I've done it again. The other side is just here, so I need to just pop a bit of solder on there. There we go. Uh, sorry. Not the, my, the uh, camera stand again. Right, that's not that done. Okay, so now we've got the link cable in. I think the next thing we need to do is to put the IC in place. Right, so this is the IC that I'm using. 
uh, and hopefully so here we go that's a new IC a new memory chip um, so let's just double check the legs first of all make sure the legs are all nice and straight which they are now again don't forget we've got to cut out this end and that needs to go on well just to prove that things don't always go to plan <clears throat> after all that I've put the wrong size socket in this is the original chip that came out and that one fits in very nicely without any problems however the new chip is bigger like so and so these other holes which are blanked off on the circuit board need to be cleaned out and used for the extra the, the larger size chip so I've got the wrong chip holder in I need a larger one so I've now got to undo all that work I've got to desolder this remove it hopefully you will not remove any more traces on the circuit board and replace it with a new one right but before I do that um, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee so um, a little montage coming up of me desoldering this um, and resoldering the new one in. Back soon. Right, okay, so I'm back roughly at the same stage I was before I made that giant and almighty cock-up. 
by putting the uh, wrong socket on. Now what we can do at this point, before we go even any further, even though I've got the link on L2 now, we can put the original chip back in again. And we can check to make sure that it still boots up after all that messing around that I did. So let's just push that into the new socket like that. Connect up the power. Connect up the signal cable. Now if we can just show you there, look, we've got the new socket in place here, the extra holes just there, and that's the original chip. Um, I'm going to apologise, I'm going to move my bendy holder to see if you can see the screen as well as the ZX81 down there. And I shall turn it on. And we've still got the, the K down there. So we still know at this point, even though I've messed around with the circuit board so much, it is actually still working. So that's a good sign just there. So let's switch it off again. Right, so we now can remove the old chip. And before we put in the new chip, we've got to do some changes. Um, what we have to do, <coughs> there's um, some address lines on here that uh, we need to re um, solder on the circuit board and to do that we need to bend some of the pins out very carefully because this is the only chip that I've got okay so we need to bend out I'll put a graphic up on the screen pin one which is just here so I'm just very gently going to bend that one out like so um, pin 26 28, 27, 26, which is that one there. Okay, let me bend that one out. And 23, so 28, 27, 26, we've already bent out. 25, 24, 23, which is that one there. Right, just as we'll check, pin 1, which is just there, it's a 28 pin chip, so 26, so 28, 27, 26 is bent out, and 23, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23. So that still goes in as per normal. Just make sure everything lines up. Now we can't switch it on yet. <clears throat> what we have to do is we've got to make some jumper cables now to go from here, from the pin, pins that we bent out, down to some of the diodes down here. So let's just get some wires first. Right, what we need to do is to link these cables to the diodes down here. So I've created a little graphic here. So number one pin, which is just there, needs to go to diode one, which is just there. And then we've got 23 goes to D3 and 26 goes to D5. So there's the diodes just on the side there. One two, three, four, five, etc. So we just need to create the cables or solder the cable from there to the diode. So let's do that now.
Right, if I can stop the stand from wobbling around. I had a bit of a problem between diode 2 and diode 3. I had a bit of a solder boost, I had to clean that up. But that's now in place, that's, that's all cleaned up okay. So I hope you can see that alright. So we're connected number 1. Got just our printout here. So number 1 goes to diode 1. And 23, which is there, goes to diode 3. And then 26, which is there, goes to diode 5. So, the moment of truth. Has it worked? Let's see what happens. Power goes in. Signal cable goes in. Let's see if I can get everything in. Get my... Light out the way so you can see. <gasps> Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. And yes, we have a K. It's a little bit longer. It takes a little bit longer to boot up because it's now obviously gone from 1K to 16K. But there it is. Look, it's working. Turn that off. Right. I think we can call that a success. So there you have it, one replacement RAM chip. Uh, even though I got it completely wrong before, but uh, sorted that out. So that's uh, two things done. That's the um, TV modular output we changed, the RAM chip we've changed. So the last thing that we do, do in video three is change the board, the um, keyboard, because there's damage on it just here. Look, um, we've got to change this ribbon cable at the back, which is powered to the keyboard. Um, I've got a new keyboard somewhere. Where's it gone? Here it is. Here we go. There's the new key keyboard ready to go in. Um, so that's ready to get stuck into place. Um, so that's going to be the third video in this series. I hope you like it. If you like what I do, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe um, and I'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching.